it's my pleasure to introduce Mark Mendelson. He's a botanist for the National Park Service at the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. He's a native of Ventura County who received his education from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, San Diego State, and several amazing botanists and wildlife biologists. Mark has been working with the flora and fauna of the Santa Monica Mountains and Simi Hills for 10 years following prior biological research and consulting for the U.S. Geological Survey, as well as private firms. So with that, Mark, take it away. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. I hope you had a nice, maybe botanically rich lunch. And I'll echo my fellow speakers and, and thank Denise, Josie, and the garden for this opportunity. And congrats to Carla. Okay, let's jump right in with an, an interactive quiz to test your fire follower site ID skills. Please enter into the chat and you'll need to be speedy. The common name of the plant that I will point out and there will be 10, one after another. Okay, here we go. Starting in the lower left, uh, this, uh, this herb. Common eucrypta. All right, this tall purple flowering one. Large flowered facilia. Sorry, I said you need to be quick. I don't have too much time. <laughs> okay, this orange one. There you go, fire poppy. This tall red one. Cardinal catch fly. How about this white droopy one? The beautiful globe lily. How about the re-sprouting tree in the background? There you go, Coast Live Oak. Okay, this orange one in the lower there. It's kind of tough. Miner's lettuce. How about this opposite leaved um, viney one in the background? Chaparral honeysuckle. And kind of hard to see, but this white tubular flowered one. There you go. A very common mo wild morning glory. And lastly, again, sorry, hard to see, depending on how big your screen is, um, this uh, world, world leaved, er, world leaved <laughs> herb in the lower right, annual bed straw. Okay. Well, I hope that provided some entertainment. Now here's a, a web resource and phone app I highly recommend to help you with identifying plants in the Santa Monica Mountains and Simi Hills, developed by one of our park's former botanists. So go to that URL, and uh, if you don't have this, uh, I highly recommend checking it out or downloading it onto your phone. And before I go any further, I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators in this work listed here, as well as a few others I'll mention later. For example, the dozens of solid interns and biotechs we've had throughout the years, some of whom are photoed here. The largest fire on record in the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area and Simi Hills has been the Woolsey Fire, which burned about 90,000 acres in November 2018. In addition to the loss of life and tremendous damage caused by the fire, it activated over two thirds of our complete set of 300 long-term vegetation monitoring plots shown here as dots with pink, the pink line outlining the Woolsey fire, green line outlining the recreation area and the Ventura LA County line in light blue. Here's a photo series showing what, we mo what we're monitoring the status and trends of our vegetation communities over time. For example, this plot before the Woolsey fire shown here to immediately post fire. And remember how Carla mentioned that crown fires are the norm for our chaparral and uh, coastal sage shrublands. And then a photo of uh, the spring following the fire, then the fall, and then the second spring following the fire. 
I can also use this slide to show you that our plots consist of a 30 meter measuring tape running cross slope between two PVC rebar posts that you can see there in the one of which you can see in the foreground there, along and above which we collect cover, species richness, shrub density, and burn severity data, as well as tree density in those rare plots. So we do have trees in the Santa Monica's. And then here in diagram form is our base vegetation monitoring protocol shown here first on the left with post-fire monitoring shown now on the right, there are two key changes to our protocol. We monitor all burn plots for two years following a fire, whether they are up in the rotation for survey or not. And we add supplemental fire specific monitoring protocols. Here's a slide you can reference in the Zoom recording later, like some of my other slides. This one listing those vegetation features that we record. We have a robust study of burned versus unburned plots covering seven fires across our first eight years of in the monitoring program shown in the table here. 2022 is our ninth year with two additional fire footprints to monitor. One of the most noticeable early results following the Woolsey fire non-native mustard skyrocketed. However, we've documented significant native shrub resprouting and growth as well. Starting with this rather bleak looking scene four months post fire to this just over one year later. See the person standing there? We measured hardy growth in native shrubs coming up from the seed bank as well only overshadowed initially by the faster growing abundant fire following perennial herbs. We found though that like several of my colleagues have mentioned throughout today, that the native vegetation recovery is highly dependent on rainfall patterns. Precipitation is graphed across years here where our consecutive drought years in the last decade are obvious in comparison to well-timed rains right after the Woolsey fire, followed by a severe drought last year. As a results example, we can look at our post-fire vegetation monitoring data spatially with these heat maps, where the darker green hues represent higher densities or cover. On the left two panels, the invasive non-native black mustard increases dramatically in the first year following the Woolsey fire, especially near the more urban Highway 101 corridor. On the right panels, the native fire following subshrub deerweed took just two years to cover the ground after the Woolsey fire and rain, while it took six years to reach a similar extent after the 2013 Springs fire and drought. Okay, switching gears to our data collection that guides weed management around the park, tracking established weeds, as well as implementing an early detection and rapid response framework. We try to control other species as well, but these pictured here are our so-called evil 25 weeds that we specifically monitor in our invasive plant monitoring program. These are all the sites in two different groups. First, the points of entry, which are trailheads and parking lots shown in yellow. And second, the dirt roads and trails with randomly generated transects shown in blue. Uh, these sites we surveyed for weeds following the Woolsey fire. We monitored about quadruple the number of sites following the fire compared to before. We really wanted to see how the fire was impacting weed recovery. Today, I'll share just what we found at the points of entry sites. In this series of pie charts, I'll bring this first one up here to get oriented. Uh, watch the Dodger blue pie slice uh, representing the proportion of points of entry sites with zero target weed species. 
and also watch the red slice, the, which represents the one to two weed species per site category. Watch them get smaller over time, while the green slice, the proportion of sites with three to five weed species per site, gets bigger especially in, in 2019 and 2020 following the Woolsey fire, when we also start to get 11 to 13 target weed species at some sites. So here we are starting in 2016. Watch again, the blue and red get smaller while the green gets bigger. 2016, 2017, 2018, and that then after this season, the Woolsey fire happened. So here's first post-fire year 2019. And you see, we start to pick up the category of sites with 11 to 13 weed species in 2020. So what can you do to help? One way is to contribute your sightings of invasive plants around the Santa Monica's and Simi Hills in our iNaturalist project. Just search for Evil 25. One of the reasons we do so much weed monitoring and restoration is to preserve and enhance our rare plant populations and keep our common native plants common. Every year we record dozens of rare plant observations and we're also busy leading or partnering with folks on a handful of endangered plant recovery projects. For example, to monitor and boost populations of our park's rare deadliest species, we're partnering with the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden's own conservation and research staff. Along with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and San Jose State University, those folks are pictured here, focusing on species such as this Marcescent Dudleya. We also have a population expansion project for the federally endangered lion's penticita, an endemic to the region. Another rare species that we've tracked and seen naturally expand in population sizes since the Woolsey fire, Bronton's milk fetch. Okay, but how did 2021 look after another winter with historically low rainfall? Not great. As you can see here from these spring 2020 photos, well, it's green here in 2020 compared to spring in 2021, quite a bit drier. And one more pair of photos, here's 2020 following a couple good rain years. And here is dry 2021. But there were some surprises out there like this giant yucca plant. And wildflower numbers were much lower, but still out there for finding uh, like these next few in Woolsey burned Leo Carrillo State Park. Here's a favorite chocolate lily to start. Shooting stars prickly phlox, blue-eyed grass, paintbrush, to this gorgeous bush poppy in unburned Topanga State Park. Speaking of Topanga, I mentioned that we have more recent fires to monitor as well. For example, last May's 1,200-acre Palisades fire. We had a remote camera next to, uh, next to one of our vegetation monitoring plots out there and we're able to capture the fire passing through. So here it is. But the camera, or at least the memory card survived, allowing us to get those photos. And here's how that plot looked one month before the Palisades fire and then a few, few days after. Rising from the ashes there though, in 2022 are beauties like this stinging lupin and the perennials seem to be resprouting well. Elsewhere in the Santa Monica's this year in the Woolsey fire footprint, for example, 
and the Simi Hills, both looking fairly green following December's heavy rains. So it's green early in our 2022 monitoring season, and we just hope for a few more storms to sustain the plants further into the year. Aside from vegetation, we also conduct long-term and post-fire wildlife monitoring, focusing on groups such as amphibians, which can be particularly sensitive to changes in habitat conditions following fire, like Mo just hinted at with the steelhead. For example, one federally threatened species is the California red-legged frog, pictured at the bottom left. I agree wholly with Mo, it's a fantastic species to try and see. In our reintroduction project for the red-legged frog, we saw a drastic reduction in breeding habitat following the fire and its resulting mud and debris flows. We remain active with this important reintroduction and monitoring work. And yes, we also monitor the populations and behaviors of charismatic megafauna as post-fire habitat returns to the landscape. So what else can you do? Join one of our many planting or weeding events. Or if we're too far away, uh, one from your local California Native Plant Society or Sierra Club chapter. So reach out to me or our fantastic restoration ecologist, Joey Algiers, or our experienced nursery manager, Antonio Sanchez. And we will great, gratefully connect you with a project that really makes a difference. Thank you very much for your attention and participation. I'll stop sharing. Yay, thanks so much, Mark. You managed to make that fun, even though a lot of it was weeds. <laughs> um, we don't have anything in the Q&A, but I'm curious um, how much volunteer support comes into the park. Do you have any numbers offhand or anything, any idea? I don't have any total numbers, but I do know that uh, since since the Woolsey fire, we've had events with um, as many as um, 500, 700 people, and we never had groups that big before the fire. So people are just tremendously invested in seeing in seeing and bringing the bringing the the, the natives back. So it's um, yeah, that's the one uh, silver lining is that it's definitely in, increased uh the public um yeah just volunteering their hours in their open spaces oh really says can't seem to ask questions oh we have something come in this is just in um <laughs> can you talk about the amphibian responses to fire that you've seen sure so um yeah, so following, um, so the red-legged frog project, um, I'll just use that one as an example. It, uh, the red-legged frogs were breeding in all, all of our reintroduction sites before the Woolsey fire. And uh, we were very excited about that. Um, and then the fire happened. And um, you know, as, as Mo showed you those, those pictures, it just totally you know, filled in um, most of our breeding habitat for the frogs. And so, um, very little breeding happened in 2019. Uh, 2020 was a little bit better and 2021 20, um, uh, better still. Um, so it, it'll probably be a, a slow recovery to where we were just before the fire. Um, and that pretty much holds true across the board, uh, except for some, uh, some species like uh, the Western toad actually increased in abundance. Um, yeah. So those are two I'd, I'd, I'd highlight. Thanks, Mark. Um, Carla entered hers into the chat. She said, what do you do about the mustard? <laughs> yeah, that's probably her, one of her and my uh, most frequent questions. Um, we can't really do anything um, terrific on the, the, the regional scale, um, but at a local scale, um, we are do, starting to uh, uh, do things like um, timed mowing experiments where we will get out there and um, with our right on mowers that we recently got uh, uh, through a nice grant um, and we'll get out there and, and mow, um, uh, you know, before flowering um, so that we can hopefully discourage um, mustards and uh, annual grasses reduce the, the um, seed bank for those species. And at the same time, you know, plant, um, you know, hundreds, thousands of natives. And hopefully over time, 
uh, you know, have those natives win out. Um, but yeah, as you know, mustard's here to stay, um, as well as the non-native grasses, but we do work at a, at a local scale and we are starting to see some successes.